to create this situation where people are locked in this vibrational prison and are not decoding the vast range of frequencies they could, therefore opening their awareness, sell them a religion or sell them something to believe. Might not be an official religion, bricks and mortar religion as my father used to call it, as long as it's a belief system. But the religions, of course, are the most obvious belief system. And um, once you take on a belief, that belief starts editing what you decode. And you start to enter a mind prison with the walls of the belief being the prison uh, walls. This is a Neil Haig picture. These represent the different religions. And what they're doing is all worshipping the same God or gods in truth. The original religions of these uh, ancient societies obviously went with the people as they located in other areas of the world. Indeed, it was a, it was a global society anyway. And it's based, the reptilian religions, if you like, are based on the, the moon and the sun, the moon goddess and the sun god, overwhelmingly. And they come in many and various forms. All these different religions are based on this same principle while claiming to be different. And these uh, religions came out of these areas of the world that we have seen earlier, is where the bloodlines came out of to a very large extent. This area I've called the religion factory, because that's where most of the major ones came from. Out of this same area came Judaism, came Christianity, came Islam, came Hinduism, and of goodness knows how many in between. And, and these religions, all based on sun and goddess worship and the uh, reptilian gods, it, when you decode it, went with the bloodlines out across the world, taking this with them. And um, when they relocated in Rome to form the Roman Empire and the Roman Church, the Roman Church, what we call Christianity, was merely the Church of Babylon relocated. That's why when you take the names away and all the rest of it, you find that Christianity in its structure and beliefs is a mirror of the Babylonian uh, beliefs and religious structure. And so the religions again come into this same category, although the followers down here have no idea this is so. In the end, they all, and it's not just these four, this is all just symbolic of, of, of the structure, again lead into the same people. And they worship the same gods under different names without realizing it. And I have to say it's, it's the same with great chunks of what we call the New Age, which is based on the Eastern religions. Now there's a lot of uh, stuff in the Eastern religions about the nature of reality and, and uh, the vibrations and, and chakras and all this stuff. It's very, very good. But still, the whole basis of a lot of it is the same story. And when you, I was reading some articles recently um, by people who've researched this and indeed directly experienced it, but a lot of these uh, mantras that are chanted in Sanskrit, the ancient knowledge of the Indian uh, area, um, they translate uh, some of them as giving yourself to the gods or God giving yourself to the deity. And when you make that choice, that decision to give yourself to the deity, you make a vibrational connection and the deity can suck you dry and control and take over your uh, thought processes because you've just given permission to, you've opened yourself to it. And these are other dimensional entities. And I have to find it strange that this is the New Age Jesus called Santana or somebody. And this is the Jesus as depicted in Christianity. Well, no one knows what Jesus looked like, and yet these two beliefs have come up with the same bloke. Um, so, you know, the, the connections between apparently different religions are, are much more um, blatant than they appear to be. And in the end, they, they all uh, lock into these other dimensional gods. Now, 
this is one key reason why, although there are many reasons. There's this um, phrase, very true, energy flows where your attention goes. When you focus on something, your energy starts to flow in that direction. When you worship something on a, on a deep devotional level, you seriously focus your energy in that direction. So what happens when you're starting to focus your attention on different versions of the same gods under different names of the same god singular? Energy flows where attention goes. Christianity. Energy flows where attention goes. 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 It's another way that our energy is being milked and vampired by giving our power away energetically, literally, to external gods or a god as we perceive it. The energy is all coming in the same direction and the two-way flow of influence is coming in the same direction. And my goodness, if you want to focus people on a low vibrational energy which you can then absorb, how about that for a symbol on which to focus? I saw nine of these in, in a church once, nine of them. Someone being tortured. What are we doing? And of course... And what you get then is the next level of this use of religion and manipulation. In each religion is, is fighting for its own predominance as the only religion. Dominate, chosen people. Um, again, uh, the caste system in, in, um, in, in, the, in the Hindu uh, part of the world, they say they're breaking it down now, but the caste system is a bloody unbelievable racism. And I have to say this, don't support the caste system and talk to me about racism, thank you very much. And, and then you've got Christianity. Only through believers in Jesus can you get to heaven. Mr. 10%. Now, only through another form can you get somewhere. And I control that form, so hey, here we go. It's the same gods that we're feeding. They set up these religions and they're... Uh, puppets did at the highest highest level in the religions they know this so the rest of the pyramids don't and the idea of religions is to lock people in a belief system that cuts out all other possibility no 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 don't tell me about that no 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 I believe in Jesus no 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 well just have a look at it and then think, see what you think no 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 and that then locks you in to a digital tunnel tunnel vision and the other way that religions are used is divide and rule and it's all based on the sun moon religion the same sun moon religion um, in Babylon they had a trinity of Queen Samirimus also known as Ishtar or Istar Nimrod the sun god she was the moon goddess and Tammuz who was the virgin born son of Nimrod and Samirimus and they said that um, Samirimus was impregnated by Nimrod as the rays of the sun and gave birth to Tamos, who was a reincarnation of Nimrod. Now, out of that little lot, you've got the Christian religion. Virgin birth of the Son of God and Father and Son are one. Samirimus, this is uh, in uh, Iraq today, in Babylon, in Iraq today, the rebuilt Ishtar Gate. She was the goddess of Babylon. And uh, you can see her everywhere. This is an original Babylonian relief depiction of the Babylonian goddess. And she was um, very much associated with the symbolism of the owl. And as these bloodlines and their religions uh, expanded out into the rest of the world, um, they started to um, take different forms. But the same basics foundation uh, of the religions was the same. Um, no surprise, therefore that when you go to the Vatican and Rome, uh, which was the Church of Babylon relocated, it is a mass of Babylonian symbolism 
um, because that's the basis of their religion. So when they moved to Rome and created the Roman Church, Christianity, um, they took all the attributes that were given in Babylon to Queen Semiramis, Queen of Heaven, Virgin Mother, um, all the rest of it, and they gave them to Mother Mary. Because what they did was they changed the Babylonian trinity of Nimrod the Father God, Tamos the Son, and Semiramis the Goddess. When they moved to Rome, they made it the, or, the God, the Lord God, God Almighty, in other words, Nimrod. Um, the uh, Son of God became Jesus, and the third point became the Holy Spirit, which they symbolized, because they took the goddess out of it, which they symbolized as a dove, which is the symbol that the Babylonians used for um, Queen Semiramis. So this is why there is the Babylonian depiction of Semiramis and Tamos, and this is a Christian church. Same again. Um, this is a picture I took last Christmas in uh, Rome when I was there for a television program. And uh, that appears to be um, Jesus and Mary. Actually, it's Semiramis and Tamos under another name. This is Isis um, uh, of Egypt and Horus, the virgin-born son of um, Egypt. Again, it's just another version of Semiramis. You find them everywhere. And so Isis and Horus become Jesus uh, uh, and Mary. And all over the world you find this same mother and uh, virgin-born son uh, or, or child religion. And it's because it comes from the same source, controlled by the same force. Uh, this is an ancient depiction of Semiramis with the points in her head here. And um, here's the Statue of Liberty, which is Queen Semiramis. It was given to New York by French Freemasons in Paris who knew exactly what it really symbolized, and it weren't bloody liberty. Again, just Queen Semiramis. Um, on top of the Congress building, you've got the Goddess of Freedom. Same bloody woman, or same symbol. Uh, the Goddess of the French Republic, same thing, Semiramis. As the bloodlines moved up into Europe and France, they took it with them. This is the, the Goddess Columbia, relating to uh, America and uh, Washington, D.C. and stuff. Same. And then we come to Nimrod, um, who was uh, also known uh, as Baal and Bel, in different aspects, and Nimrod was the sun god of Babylon. Um, and his symbol was the lighted torch or the flame, same as Tamos, because Tamos and Nimrod were one, father and son, as I said. And so we've got Queen Semiramis holding the flame of Nimrod, standing on a symbol of the sun, the sun god. Isn't it great to have the Statue of Liberty as a symbol of our freedom? This is in Paris. Same because the source is the same. This is the uh, symbol um, of the torch held by the Statue of Liberty, and that's where, right on top of the Pont d'Alma tunnel, where people take their tributes to Diana, who died just underneath. This is another depiction of Nimrod in the ancient world. He was also the fish god. Again, Jesus, the fish. Um, and um, he had the fish head hat. This is a, a, a depiction, an actual depiction from Babylon, and that's why we have the mitre in the Pope, because it's the Church of Babylon relocated. And the um, obsession with the obelisks all over the place is the penis of Osiris, the penis of Nimrod, the bloodline, symbolically. And these symbols are not just there, oh, we put them symbols there, because it makes, it's funny that they don't understand. Symbols represent what they symbolize energetically and vibrationally. And uh, this is a, a science called cymatics, or, um, where what they do is they get, have um, uh, bits of, uh, not sand, but that kind of stuff, um, and then they play sound across them. And what happens is all these um, different bits and pieces then form into these incredible symbols and geometrical symbols um, as the sound plays and once the sound stops they all go back to the kind of mess and then you change the sound and they'll form another pattern and it goes both ways everything goes both ways so a symbol will represent a sound 
and you can create the symbol with a certain sound which, it, which forms that symbol. But the symbol itself generates the sound. They're both both ways. So these symbols are all around us. They're affecting the energy fields that we interact with. That's why they use them. That's why they have street plans that, to these symbols and buildings and stuff. Nimrod, you find Nimrod again used in the modern world all the time by the people who are uh, behind this knowledge. You have Nimrod aircraft and all that stuff. And then we come to Tamos, um, Jesus. Um, same thing, this is Horus. All these sons of uh, God are the same uh, uh, Babylonian uh, virgin-born son under different names. This is the way the Egyptians depicted Horus, and this is Jesus. The halo around the head was the way the ancients depicted that the person was a sun god. Here's the Jesus halo. Well, this is an ancient standing stone of Bel, the sun god, with the halo around his head depicting he's a symbol of the sun. This is Mithra, another ancient uh, son of God figure. Uh, the story that they tell of him is just the same as the one they tell of Jesus in great detail. This is um, an, uh, two others who um, are different versions of the same story. Dionysus of Greece and Bacchus of Rome. Dionysus was born, this is long before Christianity, was born of a virgin on December 25th and as the holy child was placed in a manger. He was a traveling teacher who performed miracles. He rode a triumphal procession on an ass. He was a, a sacred king killed and eaten in a Eucharistic ritual. Dionysus rose from the dead on March the 25th, Easter. He was a god of the vine and turned water into wine. He was called king of kings and god of gods. He was considered only begotten son, savior, redeemer, sin bearer, anointed one, and the alpha and omega. He was identified with the ram or the lamb. He was hung on a tree or crucified. These people are all over the ancient world. It's just a recurring story. It's the story of the sun god. Symbols of the sun, not real people. The rising sun was a symbol used for uh, Nimrod, uh, Tammuz and Horus. So Jesus, Christ has risen. Christ is Jesus, is the light of the world. Revelation, behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. He walked on water, the sun. And so you'd expect in the home of the Babylonian church in Rome that uh, you'd have the same symbolism. This um, evergreen tree, symbol of Nimrod in, um, in Babylon, that's an original uh, obelisk from ancient Egypt in front of it. This is above the chair of St. Peter, the sun and the dove, Semiramis, in the middle of it. There's sun symbolism all over the place. Again, the sunburst in the uh, dome. In the other religions, you find this is Mormonism. These are the symbols you find around the Mormon uh, uh, temple in Salt Lake City. The sun, the rising sun. This is from Ur in uh, what is now Iraq, was Babylon Sumer, from about 2000 BC. And it is a symbol of the sun and moon goddess of, of that area of Mesopotamia. This today is the international symbol of Islam. You go into the other areas of the world, you find the same sun god, moon goddess. They're the same religion and they get their followers to feed the energy into the same gods that have created those religions. 